everyone welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sharon and this is the one more stitch knitting podcast um, you can find me at re knits on instagram ravelry youtube etc etc <laughs> okay um, i primarily podcast about my knitting projects finished objects works in progress um, all things of that sort. Occasionally, I'll also discuss some of my spinning that I have been recently getting into. Um, and yeah, without further ado, I have a lot to go through today. Um, quite a few finished objects as well as a lot of works in progress and a lot of test knits. Most of the, uh, uh, yeah, most of the projects I'll be going through today are test knits. Um, I told myself I wouldn't sign up for so many. But then everyone kept putting out really amazing patterns that I wanted to knit. So lo and behold, I have signed up for a lot of test knits and they're going really well. And I just love test knitting. I just love knitting. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Let's just start off with our finished objects um, with what I am wearing. So this here is the Greenwich Pullover. And it is designed by MJ Wills of uh, Ellis Knitwear. And this is designed out of Owner Oak Air Knitted In Yarn. And it's the unspun yarn that I knit with a lot. Uh, it's very fuzzy. This specific one's a little hairy, so it's a little itchy on me right now. Um, it's also incredibly warm, so I am like sweating. <laughs> and I might take it off further in this uh, episode depending on how warm it gets. Uh, this is in the colorway Cacafoni, and it is this really pretty light blue. It has a lot of depth in the colorway and little hints of like rusts, light blues, some pink, um, and a little bit about the construction of this garment. It is top down, and it has a set-in sleeve or a cap sleeve. I'm not entirely sure what the exact difference is between the two, but I believe she calls it a set in sleeve. Um, essentially, these sleeves are worked like short rows back and forth until it gets like armpit ish area. And then it goes down straight so that uh, you actually get like the arm slant that you might see on like commercial garments. And this just prevents a rectangle for the arm um, that a lot of other like drop shoulders might have. So, yeah very nicely designed. It has this very pretty double folded uh, neck band and a nice little increase line here, which is a nice detail that I like. I um, think that's about it. It fits really well. It is incredibly warm. And yeah, I love it. As you can see, Nugeden yarn is one of my favorite yarns to work with. Um, I absolutely love all the colors that they produce, and I just really like the way that it feels in my hand while I am knitting it. So with this one, as I was knitting it, my hands like progressively got more moisturized because of how lanolin rich it is. And that's just something that's very unique about knitting with their yarn or any uh, more natural yarn in particular. Okay, next up. I have here my alley sweater light and this is designed by sarah opie of s knits she had created a dk version i believe last year <laughs> or super early this year i think it was last year but she created a dk version of like the same uh diamond motif with the color work and she also created a uh, t version both in fingering weight and dk version and I had tested the DKT version last time. So this time I signed up to test the fingering weight uh, pullover. And it also has a very nice fold over collar. So it's double thick and squishy. Uh, it has short row shaping despite all of the color work. It's a very unique way of doing the short rows. And I really like how she integrated it. It's very seamless and smooth. And then the color work is just uh, one by one for the most part with some float catching here and there. And I knit this out of Woolen Twine Yarn, who is a natural dyer based out of Germany. Uh, her name is Yule, and she dyes these really, really pretty natural dyed colorways. 
Um, I have a lot of her yarn, <laughs> and I figured I might as well dive into it. Uh, I really like this combination that I used, and the darker color, I believe... Um, I believe the color word for the darker one is called Elder, and it's this deep purple. And then the lighter colorway is uh, in the colorway Petal. Oh, no, no, not Petal. It's in the colorway Powder. And it's this very nude-looking pink. And this is a little motif that's also carried onto the sleeve. And I really like the way that it's knit up and worked. Yeah. And this is a top-down raglan-style sweater construction. And it has this, like, very cute split hem here at the bottom with a little peekaboo of the contrast color. Yeah, a very nice sweater. Oh, and I guess to show you more of the nuances of this cacophony color and zoom in a little bit it's a bit of an overcast day so you might not be able to see it as well or actually maybe even better but here's the sleeve this next one i have here was just released today oh the Greenwich Pullover was also just released today. Today is Saturday, September 30th. This is the last day of September, and we are now entering October, which I'm very excited about. Fall is my favorite season of the entire year. I'm very excited for the weather to cool down and when I can finally wear all of my knitwear. Okay, but anyways, going back to the sweater. This is the Resty sweater. R-E-S-T-E -E sweater, not just Rest. And this is designed by Lizzie of Hive Knits. And I tested the first cardigan for her a little while back. I think it was also last year, about a year ago, maybe. Um, but it was very nice construction. I really like the amount of thought and detail that she puts into all of her designs. And this is the same. Uh, this is a 2x2 two two rib foldover collar. It is very nice and thick. And it comes up quite high to become like a mock neck so I will wear this when it gets much colder in the year <laughs> um, I do also get very toasty in this one and I knit this in two strands of the woolly knit merino cone held double and it's in mulhasen oatmeal which is the color weight and a little close-up of this yarn it is the same yarn that I used to knit my calm down cardigan which I've talked about ad nauseum is this very pretty gray beige or what i like to call a grayish colorway and then for the stripes portion of the sweater uh, lizzie calls for two strands of like a silk mohair or a surrey silk alpaca uh, held double for the stripes to make it slightly transparent but also very light and fluffy um, I did not want to have too much of a transparent stripage on the body, so I held one strand of the Wooly Knit Merino yarn held with one strand of ki uh, Drops Kid Silk in this light blue color, and it creates a very nice, like, subtle, low-contrast, light blue stripes, which I really like, and I really like how it turned out, actually. And the pattern also calls for five stripes at the bottom, but as, as I was trying it on, it was getting uh, to the point of which I typically like my sweaters. So I cut it off at four stripes. And I really like this sweater. I might change into it later in this episode to show you guys it on. Uh, but again, it is very warm. <laughs> Oh, and it's a top-down raglan construction. It has these very thick raglan details, uh, which is always a joy to look at how neat it is. And of course, there is short row shaping for the back to raise it up. Okay, next finished object. Another new to goodie. <laughs> 
This is the Matthew Pullover by Amy Sher Mix. Originally, she had published it in a magazine, but it became an independent pattern, so she vamped it up to make it more size inclusive and more up to date with her current sizing standards. And it is knit out of two strands of knitted and held together. This is in the colorway Vanessa. It's a very plush colorway. And I really love cables plus seed stitch on this knitted in. I just think the texture is so nice and you don't really lose any of the texture even though it's a very fuzzy yarn. And Amy had designed it in two different views, so one with a long sleeve as a classic pullover and then one as a vest. Um, I have a lot of pullovers already, so I decided to knit it into a vest as a more versatile piece for me to layer, especially over like a collared shirt or something like that. Um, and I did post a picture of it wearing a short sleeve collared shirt and it turned out very nice. Um, I wasn't too warm wearing it, which is good. I really like this pattern. Um, it's very versatile, again, as I've said, and you can really get creative with like the colors that you use and what types of yarn that you use. I believe it calls for a heavier DK or worsted weight if you're not using Newtonin. So you can definitely knit this in different kinds of yarns. Next finished object. Here I have ooh, a little end. Here I have the superlative sweater. And this is designed by Samantha Guerin of Samantha Guerin Designs. This is knit out of a boucle yarn that I dyed up myself. It's in the colorway Rosy Cheeks on my bouncy boucle base. The story behind this one is um, I knit both sleeves in one day because I was just getting a little fed up with knitting with boucle. I love the fabric that boucle gives, but I am not the biggest fan of knitting with boucle because it likes to catch on itself because of the little curls. Um, the finished fabric is really nice, super squishy, super soft, and it's just so much so nice to wear. But knitting on it is not my favorite. <laughs> so I wanted to get it done like as soon as possible. And I had already finished the entire body and all I had were two sleeves left. So one weekend day, I just sat down and knit on both sleeves, got them done and finished the project. It is a top down construction with a little boxy fit, uh, drop shoulder sleeve types of sleeve. And then with the neckline and then bottom hem and sleeve hems, I used a fingering weight merino yarn held together with a surrey silk in the same colorway, rosy cheeks, on my Oh My Merino light base as well as my surrey silk base. And this entire garment's knit out of a DK weight yarn, so that's why I held two different yarns together for the hemmings. And as you can see, I do not always weave in all of my ends. Yeah, this is a super fun pattern to knit, and the finished project is really much just like a sweatshirt. All right, I think that is it for all of my finished objects. So I had uh, five in total from this past month since I last recorded. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have even more in October because I have a lot of um, test knits that are due then, so I'm going to finish them by then. Okay. okay, it is getting very warm. Hello! So when I finished recording and was starting to edit my video, I realized I had forgotten a sixth FO. So here it is. It is a cardigan, and this is the Calyx cardigan by Tete Besh or Orlane. 
and it is just the best cabled cardigan that I have knit up um, and honestly it's just so fun to knit like the entire sleeve has this really pretty cabling motif and then it also goes on the midsection of the body I knit this out of the Durham Natura yarn in the Gilead base and it is 100% merino wool but it's a woolen slash worsted spun so anyways it's like very uh, lightweight and it's very plushy so in this ball it comes with uh, 250 meters for 100 grams which is typically like a dk gauge or dk type of yardage but it is worsted weight so because of the lightness of this yarn it actually fit perfectly for this pattern which typically calls for a dk weight and then just a tiny bit about the construction of this. It is a top-down raglan construction where uh, everything is knit seamlessly. And the button band is later picked up. And it's a garter type of button band. I actually had to knit this button band twice because the first time I picked up way too many stitches. And it was just curling all over the place. But now it's all fixed and good to go. And I did have buttonholes knit into it, but I have not knit or I have not sewed on any buttons yet. Um, I kind of like the way it looks with no buttons at the moment, and I'm not sure if I'll wear it buttoned up. But you know, maybe a few weeks down the line, I will think otherwise and want to add in my buttons. At that point, I will then have to pick which buttons to knit up or to add into this knitwear. I will jump into all of my works in progress again there are quite a few so this might take a little while um majority of them are test knits and i will go through a brief description of all of the garments um and how i've been liking knitting on them yes at the top of my pile i have this really big knit <laughs> this is the crossroad sweater by ann catherine And it's supposed to be like a long tunic length. So I imagine this paired with like leggings and knee high boots. Or just like with pajama pants on the bottom, cozied up on the couch <laughs> as it gets colder. Um, I did not finish the sleeves yet, as you can tell, but I did go ahead and get the neckband on just because I like to see what the garments look like with a neckband on it it makes it look more finished and then i am almost done with the bottom i am just at the opening portion of this um, x motif so it's like a crossroads in cables and then once i'm finished there i will get the hem done oh yeah the yarn <laughs> so i knit this up in blacker yarns gotland dk weight is a 100% Gotland fiber yarn in this natural uh, gray color. It's like a medium gray. The Gotland is known for their very long, shiny, lustrous staples. Um, and you can definitely tell when you're knitting on it that it has a little bit of shine to it. And um, it's not the softest yarn, I would say, but it's really nice for like outerwear and things that you're not going to be wearing next to skin. It's a very good quality yarn as well. And here's just what the yarn looks like in its ball. So last time my episode, I showed this one already. This is the Malinois cardigan, and I have made progress since then. Um, I have joined underneath the sleeve, and I'm about uh, two to three inches down the body portion. I decided to stop there for now and pick up the sleeve because the little saddles take up a... Um, yarn cable or it's like on hold so it just gets a little annoying when they're dangling in the way so i decided i just like 
start with one of the sleeves for now and then see how it fits as well. Uh, I might also block it out or block out the sleeve first so I can see how it fits on the body after that because the saddles are kind of um, pulling a little bit and they're not laying as flat as it would be in the final final project after it's blocked. And I'm knitting this out in Wooly Knits British Wool Cones and um, whew, so many fuzzies. This is in the colorway Burgundy Red. It's a very nice fall red. <laughs> uh, very true burgundy as well. And the British wool cones are not nearly as soft as the merino ones, but it does soften a bit after washing and blocking and it blooms a lot. I found that with like wooly knit yarns that they all seem to bloom a lot after washing. It's super lightweight so far. Um, Wooly knit cones are kind of a light fingering weight, but once it blooms, it becomes like a full fingering weight type of yarn. And I'm very excited to see what the final project will look like. So my one sleeve is in progress. And this is knit on 2.75 millimeter needles. They're super tiny. And this cardigan is just taking me a very long time because of how small the needles are and how small the stitches are. Um, after knitting a while on it, it kind of starts hurting my hands a little because of how tiny it is. So I have I can't knit on it um, consecutively for like numerous hours like I could for other projects. Oh, and the construction of this sleeve is also a set in sleeve. So you can see that it's a diagonal down here. It's smaller up at the top and then it gradually gets larger and larger and that just accompanies or it just accentuates like the sh actual shoulder shaping that is on our bodies. Next, work in progress. Here I have the Framework Raglan by Jessie May Designs. I am knitting this out in Andean Treasure by Knit Picks. It is a sport weight yarn and it's in the colorway Midnight Heather. Uh, it's a 100% baby alpaca yarn. And the pattern calls for a fingering weight yarn, but you can essentially adjust to what thickness of yarn you want to use as long as it meets gauge. Um, the gauge is very loose for fingering weight. It's knit on five millimeter needles. So I decided to go up to a sport weight so that it's uh, less holy in the finished object. And the way that this is constructed is you're knitting on the right side, but it becomes the wrong side at the very end because the garment is all pearl. And then it has like these slip stitch details um, every now and then along the garment. It's a very creative uh, project. And I really like the way that this yarn is actually knitting up. So here you can like see the slip stitch detail on the sleeves and along the raglan details. Yeah, I really like how this is knitting up. It is very, very soft. I mean, baby alpaca is always very soft. <laughs> yeah, I am excited to finish this up as well. I am on the body about three inches down. And I stopped here because I finished a ball of yarn. So I need to join another one and then I will continue knitting on it. And it's a top-down raglan construction garment. Okay, moving right along. Um, I will just go through all of my test knits right now before I get into some of my more personal projects. Right, here I have the Sibling Sweater, this is by Penrose Knits. Uh, Laura is the designer behind Penrose Knits and she designed this to be a stripy sweater. But I was looking through my stash and I really wanted to knit it with this specific yarn. And it's the Sun Nascar and Pure Gint in um, Fruity Tootie. So it has these like colorful little tweed speckles. It's a very fun yarn and I really enjoy knitting with it. Um, and knits up very smoothly and it's very plump. It's not, it's also not like too rough on the hands. 
So it has this very thick um, drop shoulder detail. It's a drop shoulder construction. Um, I really like the details again that Laura has put into this. And on her samples, the stripes also do go along the um, shoulder decoration or shoulder, the shoulder stripe portion. Um, it creates this because it has the make ones on both the wrong side and the right side to create like a trapezoid type of shape. So some designers will automatically make like the trapezoid shape and the others will use make ones to generate that specific shape that they want. And then I have just joined the front sections together. I have not joined the front and the backs yet. And I'll be knitting on this for a little bit before I join in with the back. And I also stopped here because I need to join in another ball of yarn. This is going really well. It is going to come out around the end, mid to end of October, I believe. Oh, and this is knit up in four millimeter needles. It is one of my favorite needle sizes to work with because it, I feel like it just like flies. Oh, just kidding. I did not join the front yet. <laughs> I think I'm on the join round right now and I ran out of yarn. Okay. Next up. Here we have a very soft knit. This is the Skyline Pullover by Tori Yu, and this is also a test knit, of course. <laughs> Naturally, who would have guessed? Okay, uh, this is knit up with one strand of merino and one strand of Surrey silk, and I have actually dyed up the Surrey silk to look like this. It's going to be one of my new colorways. Um, in the skein, you'll actually see more of the color variation in it. And actually, let me go grab one of the merino counterparts for it. So, this is what it looks like in the skein. It's a very, very soft, variegated colorway. There are hints of yellows, pinks, grays. Very subtle. And then on the merino, you can actually see more of the colors distinctly. So I've been really liking playing with like soft variegated colors. And I will be bringing this into my next yarn collection. This is knit, uh, sorry, this is dyed on my Oh My Merino Light. And then this one is dyed on my Surrey Silk bases. And yeah. They go really well together. <laughs> uh, I really love pairing the merino with a Surrey silk. But going back to my skyline, I paired this with a bare merino yarn. And this is just undyed. Um, I want it to be a very gentle color and very, very softly variegated. So you can just barely see like the subtle nuances of the color. And I have just joined the front together, so I'm just working the back and forth rows until I can join the front and the back. I know I am a little bit behind on this, but have no fear, I will get it done before the deadline because I really want to wear this. Oh, and uh, the construction of this is very interesting. It's one of the saddle style of drop shoulders where you start with like the two shoulder pieces and then work from those. I really like Tori's designs because they're always like so versatile to wear and just so easy to wear. And I'm also testing this with my friends Serena and Shreya. So they have already finished theirs. I just need to catch up now. And we all knit them in like very soft pastel-y type of colors. Um, and I'm so excited for us to like be together in the photo to show this off. All right. Next, work in progress. This is my last test knit that I have as a work in progress. 
Um, things are a little bit tangled up in here, so please bear with me. No, I'm just kidding. It was not that tangled. <laughs> okay, here is my Chrysanthema shawl. It is a shawl by uh, Ines Sang. I'm not super far into it, so this like explodes out even more until there's like some very pretty um, lace leafy designs, and I'll be using two different contrasts yarns for that. So this is my main yarn. It is Pearl Soho's Linen Quill. Uh, I really like this yarn. It's so nice to knit up and it's in the colorway still water blue. I'm actually pulling this from the outside so I stuck the little name tag down the middle so I wouldn't lose it. <laughs> um, it's just a very gray blue that's very neutral, moody type of colorway. Yeah, so far so good. Um, I'm knitting up the 2x2 two two ribbing portion that creates the top portion of the shawl or the straighter portion of the shawl. And all my stitch markers here are by From SY or From Sai on Etsy and she's also on Instagram. Yeah, and then I will show you the two contrast colors I'll be pairing with it. So my first one that I will be pairing with it is this one. So in Ines's design, it is one section of the leafy design. And then after a little bit, it's like more sections of leafy design. So for the first section, because it uses more than one full skein of spring green weight yarn for all of the col contrast color sections, I'm going to use this one for the first part of it. And this one is, oh, actually, both of my contrast colors are from Big Little Yarn Co. Uh, Mel is the dyer behind it. And this is in the colorway Juan. It's one of, it's from her in stock sales, but it's from some of her um, spooky Halloween collections. Or no, spooky summer collections. Oops, sorry, this one's going to be the second contrast color. So most of the shawl will be this contrast color. And then the first stripe of it will be this contrast color, which is the empty restaurant. And this one's part of her Studio Ghibli collection that occurred not too long ago. Oh, they're super pretty. Um, I had made a very long decision as to what colors I should use for this shawl. Um, the end goal of this shawl is to wear it to a wedding at the end of October and my dress is like a tealish blue so I was just like comparing the different colors to see what would go well with it and eventually I landed on this one. So just to put them all together like a very nice moody color yeah I'm very excited to see these two worked into the shawl eventually <laughs> okay next up I have here the very very beginnings of a dear Duomo sweater that I am knitting with my friend Jack uh, we had got so this yarn is also from Big Little Yarn Co, specifically the Surrey Lace, is in the colorway Vivich, V V I T C H. I guess you would just say like Vivich. I don't know, but anyways, it's also part of her uh, in stock spooky summer colorway collection. Oh. And like just seeing all these Surreys like next to each other is just like I just want to touch them all day because <laughs> they're so soft. Anyways. <laughs> This is the Dear Duomo. I do not have very much on it at all uh, because I've been busy knitting on all the other test knits. And I believe Jack is a little further than me. She has the ribbing done. <laughs> so yay, good for her. <laughs> okay, and then I have literally just begun the ribbing. I'm maybe like five 
rose into it. So I'm also holding this with a bare merino yarn. This is again in my Oh My Merino light base. And together it creates a very subtle variegated color. And I am very much into these like subtle soft variegations. It is just a circle right now. <laughs> um, I'm likely will not share too much progress on that in my videos just because it's going to be slow moving. But once I do have some su substantial progress on it, I will show again. Okay, and then next up, this one is one of my more urgent personal knits that I need to finish <laughs> by next week. Here is my stripy turtle tank. And I am knitting this together with the other Bay Area crew, uh, Jack, Serena, and Shreya, because next Saturday is Lambtown Wool Festival, Lambtown Sheep, blah, Lambtown Sheep Festival in Dixon, California. Um, it's like two hours away from where we are in the Bay. So we decided our matching knits this year will be the Stripey Turtle Tank by Emily Curtis. And I am knitting this out of, well, I guess the main color is a Malabrigo sock base. And it's a like dark purple that's very subtly variegated. I can pull it out of the bag. And then all of my contrast colors are the Woolberry Fiber Company Flock Mini Set mini set colors so i also have them in a little baggie right here okay here are four five six okay i have six contrast colors i don't even know if you can see them all <laughs> this is very awkward to hold up all right here are the six contrast colors and I'm just following the pattern and doing two rows for each of these stripes. Uh, the Woolberry Flock Collection also came with a, a seventh color, but it was so similar to some of the other light colors that I decided to just leave it out. Um, I'm very close to finishing. I'm on the front piece. And then all I will have left is the back. Join them together. Weave in a ton of ends, as you can see here, and a block, and I believe an I cord end or an I cord finishing to make everything look very neat. Yeah. Okay. Wow. We actually got through everything relatively quickly, I think. Uh, next, I will go through a little bit of um, what you might have seen on Instagram that I posted a couple weeks back. I am joining in on the Wooly Knit Woolwide campaign where they have decreased their international shipping prices by a bit and they decided because they decided they wanted to make it more accessible to everyone around the world. Um, in joining in on the campaign they provided me with a 20 percent off coupon code that i'll pop up somewhere here or here somewhere on the screen i will pop up the code it is just sharon 20 and you can get 20 percent off on any of the 500 gram um, merino cones british wool cones as well as the 200 gram british wool hanks um, as joining in with part of the campaign, Wooly Knit also sent to me a couple of items for me to sample. And just for everyone's awareness, I have purchased from Wooly Knit before. I have a lot of cones from them that I purchased with my own money. And I also get nothing from anyone using the coupon code. So it is just for everyone's mutual benefit. Okay, so first up, here is a 200 gram British wool hank. It is gigantic. And very soft and floofy it does not feel the soft in the actual cone but once it's off and it has like some air in it it feels much softer but this hang is so big and it's so squishy so this is in uh, i believe it's called autumn glow 
And again, it's in the British wool. It's also very nicely kind of um, heathered. There's like some whitish bits along with like the actual autumny pink color. Don't really know how to describe it, but it's just a very nice colorway. And then they also sent me one of the merino wool cones. This is just in the natural white shade um, in Blanco. And I really like the merino cones. <laughs> um, yeah, if only they had like all of the British wool cone colors in the merino, then I would be getting all the merinos all the time. <laughs> But yeah, they have a lot of more information about their yarns on the website. And the last cone that they sent me is this purple one called Foxglove Purple. It's like a very purple purple, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Slightly cool toned, I believe. Um, but yeah, feel free to use my coupon code to get 20% off your Wooly Knit order. Um, I really enjoy their yarns, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it with my own money, and I'm staring in that direction because that is where I'm keeping all of my cones that are waiting to be knit with. <laughs> I do have a lot of plans for them, so no worries, they will be used up eventually, uh, and I'm very excited to see where they go. <laughs> okay. Um, I do have a couple other garments that will that are in the works. Uh, I haven't swatched them yet, but they are coming because they're also test knits. But they're due much later, so I haven't started them yet. And then next Saturday, I'm going to Lambtown Fiber or Lambtown Sheep and Wool Festival, as I have stated already, and that'll be very fun. I'll try to get a couple of clips just to see how it is. And yeah, I'm very excited. I'm also very excited to hang out with Jack and Serena. Because we don't get to see each other too often throughout the months that we don't have anything planned. <laughs> okay, I believe that is it. Um, I guess, like, I don't have that many um, acquisitions this time. Actually, I don't have any yarn acquisitions to share with you this time. But I do have some project bags that I am happy to share right now. Uh, mostly because, well, some of them are by my friend Eva. Of the Blue Rabbit House. Eva is like such a kind person. She's super sweet and super nice to talk to. This first bag is a little cat with pumpkins and it's very nice for Halloween. I forgot the name. So she names all of her project bag animals that are on it. I forgot the name of this cat. <laughs> Um, this one, so she also designs them like very environmentally friendly, so it's like organic cotton, and the cords are a like cork cord, I believe. Yeah. But this one is special because it's orange, and most of her um, cords are brown. So another example, this is where I'm keeping my skyline in. Here's Vera the pig. This is her newest design. And it's so cute. She recently changed her fabric to this like uh, twill type of fabric and it just feels very sturdy. And then you can also add in like handles, a little clip accessory for a shoulder strap or crossbody strap along with some pockets on the inside. So they're all add-on items. And the inside of this is like very bright pink as you can see. I got this in the sweater size, and then this one is in the sock size. Um, I have a bunch more of her project bags that are all in use right now. I just love them so much. They're so creative, and I love supporting Eva. Yeah. And then another acquisition project bag related. I got one of the uh, petite knit bags. It's like the apricot. 
uh, flower motif that's on it. So she often drops like limited amounts of various flower colorways. Have not taken the tag off yet, but I have already used it. <laughs> yeah, it's like very nicely quilted. So it's very thick and plush. And on the inside is just a bunch of pockets. I really like that like the bottom is surf is a circle so it stands up on its own very well. And I just have my Dear Duomo materials in here. Sometimes I'll like throw in some various other projects that I have as well. Okay, I think that is it now. Um, other than that, not much else going on. Uh, I haven't been spinning too much because I've been busy knitting. <laughs> But I'm sure once like this busy season of getting all the knits out is over, I will go back to spinning and then I'll also get in some sewing. Yeah, that'll be very fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode and I will see you somewhat soon in the next one. So have a very good weekend or rest of the weekend or rest of the week, depending on when you're watching this. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.